Why do people hate Brie Larson? It's a question I've often asked in videos before, but yesterday I was looking over a channel called Yellow Flash since it had been suggested to me by a viewer, and oh god, we're definitely coming back to him. But something that caught my eye was the sheer number of videos on Brie Larson that this guy has made. I thought it was only our good friends Geeks and Gamers and The Quartering that has these weird obsessions with Brie Larson, but oh no 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 no, there is a lot of them. And seeing this was the last straw for me, and I decided to start investigating the the whole topic of Brie Larson, because it was also a topic that I've wanted to get into for a while. Now, I didn't want to go into this video having already made up my mind. I may very well make fun of people like The Quartering and Geeks and Gamers for abusing her name for profit, the Critical Drinkers fans dislike bombing her YouTube channel, and just the way people use her as a scapegoat for hatred online. These people absolutely suck for doing this, but I'm also genuinely interested in the reasons why so many people dislike her so much, whether it's valid or whether it's a bit over-exaggerated. And so I tried my best to look at the evidence from a more neutral standpoint. Obviously, I can't remove my bias completely, so take everything I say in this video as just my take on the evidence that I've researched. This is just one perspective, and you should always try to form your own conclusions based on the information that you've gathered and the reflections that you've made upon that information. I'd recommend you to go watch all the videos I showcase in this video to understand the context for yourself. But without further explaining, let's just get into the video. And we'll start by addressing some of the reasons that I've found for why people don't like Brie Larson, or at least where a lot of the hate started. So through a decently thorough investigation, I've figured out some of the reasons why people dislike her. Firstly, there have been a lot of rumors these past couple of years about her being difficult to work with, and people have used the Avengers interviews as examples, but I haven't found any actual evidence of this. I mean, Samuel Jackson worked with her and under her on multiple projects before again working with her on Captain Marvel. I can only assume that if she she'd been difficult to work with, then maybe he wouldn't have been so keen on doing it again. But I don't know. That's just one example. She may be difficult to work with, but I haven't been able to find any evidence of these claims. Now, what I have found evidence of is the way she conducted herself during interviews for the Avengers. I'm sure you've seen some of those videos that do a deep analysis of the face work between Brie Larson and her fellow co-stars. And while she did say some quite arrogant and perhaps even ignorant things, it doesn't necessarily make her a bad person. Like yes, I admit that it all looks quite weird, but if you hired professional body analyzers, you'd be able to find shit like this in pretty much anyone. Like during the Jake Paul Ben Askren press conference, people came to the conclusion that Ben was in Jake's head and that Jake would lose because of all his twitches and how he touched his knees. And he ended up fucking starching Ben Askren on fight night. Chill out people. I don't think it's that deep. Now one of the weirder things that I've found was when the posters for Captain Marvel first came out and people saw that she wasn't smiling a lot somehow pissed people off again. And some people went in and photoshopped her into smiling, which was just really weird. But now moving on, Brie has always been quite into activism. She does a lot of charity work and she tries to be a voice for minorities, which naturally just pisses off a certain part of the internet, just because they don't like progressive politics. However, I think that the main catalyst was during a speech at a film awards ceremony in 2018 where she said that there were too many white men interviewing her about a wrinkle in time and not enough diversity amongst these interviewers and just amongst film critics in general. I'd like to bring to light an aspect of our industry that has risen to the surface in the last week. <sighs> it's an issue that's been bubbling since like really the whole time, but this issue has a solution that each one of us in this room can participate in. So earlier this week, USC Annenberg's Inclusive Initiative released findings that 67% of the top critics reviewing the 100 highest grossing movies in 2017 were white males. Less than a quarter were white women and less than 10% were unrepresented men. Only 2.5% of those top critics were women of color. So you're probably thinking right now like, wow, that super doesn't represent the country that I live in and that's because that's true. This is a huge disconnect from the US population breakdown of 30% white men 30% white women, 20% men of color, and 20% women of color. On top of all of this, am I saying that I hate white dudes? No, I'm not. But what I am saying is, is that you make a movie that is a love letter to women of color, there is an insanely low chance a woman of color will have the chance to see your movie 
and review the movie. This is where the whole thing about her hating men first started, and it pissed off a certain group of people on the internet, who started review bombing Captain Marvel before it even came out. They started analyzing her and trying to find everything wrong with her, and overall just spread hate on anything she did, for example, her YouTube channel. Thing is, most of these people never even responded to what she was saying. Like, I rarely saw anyone mentioning the statistics she used, that 60% of movie critics in America are white men, while white men really only make up 30% of the actual American population. That's a massive misrepresentation of the American population. And the thing is, good reviews do have a really big effect on what movies get watched more and get pushed out more. So her argument that predominantly rich white men watching a movie about, say, a poor black girl, a story that they likely can't relate to or empathize with completely, probably shouldn't be the vast majority of people who are reviewing the movie. Please, I'm not saying that white people can't enjoy movies showcasing different races, ethnicities, cultures, not not at all. I'm white myself, and I love movies that show me different stories with different people and different cultures and contexts than what I'm used to seeing here in Denmark. However, I don't see any big issue with what Brie Larson was saying. It wasn't racist, sexist, or egotistical, and a lot of people who called her out for this failed to actually argue against the arguments that she was making. Instead, they just called her a misandrist and abused her name for profit. Listen, you don't need to agree with what she said, that's fine, but it's not a statement that warns this bullshit she had to endure. And listen, I get it. I do see how people could have misinterpreted what she was saying. The notion that people can't view and review movies that don't necessarily represent them is a bit absurd, but that wasn't exactly what she was saying. I don't believe this speech was meant to be anything other than a call for more diversity in the people who report on Hollywood. It was perhaps just worded quite poorly. I definitely think that it's incorrect to see this as Brie Larson saying that white men can't watch or review movies that aren't made for white men. No, she's white herself, advocating for women of color. Oh, so I'm not talking specifically about A Wrinkle in Time. Like, if the movie wasn't good, then it wasn't good. People have a tendency to call out the lack of representation in movie critics when a movie does poorly, and not when those same critics give movies like Get Out or Moonlight great reviews. However, I do think that we should call out the lack of diversity in the film critic industry in general, and not only when a movie does poorly. But again, just like Brie Larson said, it's not about removing white people as movie reviewers, it's about allowing more people to become movie reviewers, people with different cultural backgrounds and experiences. But anyways, I'd recommend you all to go watch this speech for yourself. I don't personally think there's anything inherently wrong with it, but I mean, I am also a feminist, so perhaps you'll make something different out of it. You should all have the opportunity to hear her takes from herself, rather than only from me, or the quartering, or whoever else that has a specific bias. And make your own assessment on the information that you've accumulated. I'm just trying to understand and explain the topic from the research that I've done, and perhaps give you all a different perspective on Brie Larson. Anyways, that was a little bit of context on why people have such an issue with Brie Larson. Now let's get into the way she's been milked and misrepresented for views. Now like I mentioned before, YouTubers like Yellow Flash, Geeks and Gamers, The Quarter, all these anti-SJWs have made video after video after video on Brie Larson. It's such a weird obsession. Like, look at some of these video titles. The lies of Brie Larson, the most unlikable person on earth. Brie Larson attacks me. We must strike back. The MCU hired a Captain Marvel backside body double. What the fuck? We'll talk a bit more about why they do this in a bit, but I first want to showcase the ways in which they talk about her. As always, don't go send any hate towards any of the people that I talk about. I'm sure they wouldn't care either way, but please, it's just not needed. Anyways, returning back to our favorite boy in the world, Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers made a video on Brie Larson's comments. And just in case you guys forgot how this man conducts himself in his videos, let me just remind you, because this is hilarious you know miss brie larson uh the activism actress uh the person that wants to treat captain whammon i mean captain marvel as an activism movie because she is so into diversity and she is so into helping out the little people that need their help because she's such a powerful whammon a powerful white whammon and she is here to take the amazing platform that she has gotten herself to to help the little people let me help you minorities let me help you other women because i'm so great i am so much better than you and i am going to reach upon you with my white privilege and show you the way of being successful because you can't do it yourself right Brie, Brie Larson that's what you think 
You think that everybody else can't do it themselves. They need your help because you're such an ego maniac. Isn't that right, Brie Larson? I have never seen someone so offended over literally nothing. Like, what is he trying to say here? That Brie Larson, a white person using her massive platform and fame to try and advocate for the rights of minorities and help more people succeed in the movie industry, that this is somehow a bad thing? Ah, uh, yes, advocating for the inclusion of other people, that really sounds egotistical to me. Like, bro, what are you doing with your platform? Grifting your right-wing politics to impressionable people. Anyways, he had this to say about Brie Larson's comments during her speech. And look at that headline. Brie Larson, I don't want to hear what a white man has to say. Oh, wow. How, that is just, that's so respectful of you, Brie. How amazing that you're just so inclusive and you're so about not being racist, yet here you are being racist. It's amazing how that works out. So let's scroll down to where she says, I don't need a 40-year-old white dude to tell me what didn't work about A Wrinkle in Time. It wasn't made for him. I want to know what it means to women of color, biracial women, to teen women of color. Am I saying I hate white dudes? No, I'm not. What I'm saying is if you make a movie that is a love letter to women of color, there is an insanely low chance a woman of color will have a chance to see your movie or review your movie. Well, Brie Larson, that is a racist comment. I love how he takes this speech that, by the way, he hasn't actually watched himself at this point, and disregards every backed up argument she makes, and instead calls her a racist. For the remainder of the video, he doesn't once talk about the statistics she brought up, and instead moans about how she doesn't want white men to have an opinion, which is not at all what she means. But she's just woke and a feminist, which means she's a terrible person, for simply saying that movie critics should be a little more representative of the the diversity of the American population and that women, especially women of color, often have a harder time in the movie industry. I honestly don't understand how that makes her the most unlikable person on the planet. Everybody hates her. Everybody is sick and tired of her crap. Everybody. That's why these videos are generating so many views because there is such a there is such a desire out there for Brie Larson to be exposed because she is such an unlikable human being. She is one of the most unlikable human beings on the planet, if not the most unlikable. Anyways, I promised myself that I wouldn't talk about Geeks and Gamers too much, but there's just so much to talk about when it comes to him. But let's move on to the other Jeremy, who's just as bad. Now, if Geeks and Gamers was my example of how people full-on lie about Brie Larson and hate on what she says without context, then the quartering is my example of how they use this agenda against her for profit. And when I say profit, I mean that they're fucking loaded because of her. They need to thank her because they're getting a shit ton of views off of beating a dead horse, being hateful towards her, and sometimes even full on lying about her. Now what's even more disgusting is how Jeremy here puts Brie Larson in the thumbnails with the same revealing outfits, essentially using her tits to get himself attention. It's either real fucking scummy or it's the weirdest way to tell someone that you have a crush on them that I have ever seen. Now my final example of anti-SJWs who have a weird obsession with Brie Larson is the critical drinker, who for some reason made a video on her making a YouTube channel. It just feels so random, especially considering the other content on his channel. Like, don't get me wrong, his video isn't the worst thing I've seen, but it's just unnecessary. It's supposed to be a funny memeing session of Brie Larson, but it just turns toxic, and he kind of invites his audience to go over to her channel and leave her hate. He doesn't explicitly say that they should, but it's heavily implied that it will happen. Well, take a look at the ratio on your first video. It ain't gonna get any better for from here, trust me. And perhaps this is just because I myself got raided by fans of The Critical Drinker and I now feel a deep and intimate bond with Brie Larson because of our shared trauma. Or maybe I just think that him and his fans are childish idiots who hate just for the sake of hating, all because she offended them for having progressive opinions. Which again, you can totally disagree with, but at least bring some counter arguments. Anyways, I've been thinking a lot about the reasons why the hate for Brie Larson came to be. I just hate culture in general. And I think a very simple but yet quite relevant theory to use would be social identity theory. Now even people who aren't studying psychology may have heard of this theory. It's a very large and dense theory with a shit ton of different branches and I won't claim to be an expert in it, oh no. But simply put, 
it's about how we as humans form relations. We create in-groups and out-groups, and it's about how these relations help shape our identity. We are part of many different groups, not just one. Like, for example, if a person identifies as an American, then they can very well also identify as being part of their family, or their sports team, or their friend group, of a fandom, of a political ideology, all at the same time. And while we have these in-groups, we also have out-groups, which in this case, for example, could be a British people, a rival sports team, or a different fandom. And there's often some kind of intergroup conflict between the groups, be it something harmless like the spirit of competition, or even a full-blown culture war like what we see in modern politics. Now, relating back to Brie Larson, just the action of her naming white men in any negative connotation has already created intergroup conflict between these people who identify as white men and then the outgroup consisting of the misandrists, the people who want to hurt them. Being part of an in-group often leads to what is known as in-group bias or in-group favoritism, which is where we elevate our own groups to higher standards and apply less worth to our outgroups. Bias in this case is the dismissal of the evidence and arguments that the other side gives and instead criticizing, abusing, and spreading lies about the other side. And and coming together as white men against those who want to oppress them. And also just quickly, you can be a white man and even identify as one and not be part of this specific group of white men, alright? But basically, Brie Larson has been used as a scapegoat for specific groups of people to push her and people like her down, and make themselves feel really good and united. This theory is very relevant to hate culture on the internet, it even goes the other way. People who are on the side of Brie Larson will see some of these people's genuine fear of the left, and a genuine fear that their rights are being taken away from them. And with this in-group bias, see these anti-SJWs as just cowardly misogynists. Which isn't always the case. Both sides of any intergroup conflict conflict always has a certain degree of bias, but being aware of the effect that being part of a group can have on us is something I think we should all try to do. It's important to try and not understand situations out of context and try to be well versed and informed about a topic or situation so that we can make rational decisions. Also just by the way, I'm not claiming that this theory explains everything about hate culture. No, it's just one perspective on one aspect of hate culture, okay? Overall, I think the hate for Brie Larson has gone way out of hand, and I do not condone any of the behavior we showcased here. However, I did find it very interesting to come into this video with a more open perspective and trying to understand why people hate her so much, and whether or not it's even valid. My conclusion at least is that Brie Larson has had her moments of arrogance in interviews, but other than that, she's been taken completely out of context to fuel a heated and disgusting hate train towards her. Listen, if you don't like her, cool, that's completely up to you, and I can maybe see your reasons why, but all this hate and making her out to be the worst person in the world is really gross and unnecessary. Like what has she honestly done that warrants this reaction that has gone on for years? Think it's time to move on, people. Anyways, that was all I had for today. I hope you all enjoyed the video and hopefully found it insightful. As always, if you agree, disagree, or neutral agree on some things and disagree on other things, then be sure to leave your perspectives down in the comments. I'm excited to see what you all think of this, and let's please keep it civil. But other than that, I hope you all have a wonderful day, stay safe, and peace out.